Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello learners, welcome to lecture 10 of our human resource management course. In this lecture, I will take you through the dynamic landscape of HRM in the digital age. So as we embark on this journey of exploring the emerging trends in HRM and the future that it holds, we will be talking about not just the changes but also we will try to work on few such strategies that will help us equip ourselves with the insights that will shape the future of human resource management. So let us get started to delve into the transformative forces reshaping the workplace and together let us chart a course for navigating the challenges and harnessing the opportunities that lie ahead. So today we are going to talk about the emerging trends in HRM. Let us get started. The very first trend that can be witnessed today is the digital transformation. In the era of technology, in the era of, era of industry 4.0, HRM is witnessing a lot of changes, a profound transformation which is driven by the digital technologies. Things like automation, artificial intelligence, analytics and many uh, things are revolutionizing the traditional HR. So it is no more the conventional HR systems which were into being, but a lot of changes are being witnessed in today's human resource management. Uh, from streamlined recruitment processes using AI driven tools to predictive analytics for talent management, HR professionals are leveraging technology like anything to enhance the efficiency and decision making. So we can very well see that today artificial intelligence is something which has made its way into nearly everything and even human resource management is not left untouched. So there is a there are a lot of interventions which have happened and today AI is definitely being used like anything in human resource management practices also. So under it integration of AI, ML and analytics, today we are using analytics to ensure data driven decision making. We are making use of n number of things like descriptive analytics in HR. We are using the analytics for the purpose of making prediction by means of predictive analytics. Not only this, in HR prescriptive analysis is also being made use of. So more and more of data driven decision making is something that is given way to by means of technology today. A lot of emphasis is being placed on using AI right from recruiting the individuals wherein AI can be used for uh, you know the screening of applicants, they can be used for taking online interviews and uh, definitely a lot of artificial intelligence based uh, human resource systems are coming up and they are making their way. Similarly machine learning is also being used for HRM in various spheres. So definitely you know human resource professionals are leveraging technology to enable data driven decision making, enhance efficiency and to foster a good environment within the organization. Today we can see separate dashboards being maintained by the organizations for various purposes, specifically with reference to HR. A lot of performance metrics being defined, usage of technology for monitoring and tracking the progress of performance of employees. You know, 
asynchronous and synchronous mediums of training the individuals. So, all these things are definitely very, very instrumental in today's time in shaping HRM and shaping the success of the organization. Moreover, streamlining talent processes get another aspect of digital transformation. Next is the next trend which is picking up is remote work and flexibility. So, there has been a global shift towards remote work and has become more than a response to external circumstances. It is now a strategic choice. At one point of time, you know, this came as a response to external stimuli or external circumstances. For example, when the globe was hit by COVID-19, many organizations had to think of remote work as the solution to the problem. But nowadays, it is being used as a strategic choice. Many organizations are deliberately going for remote working solutions for their employees because they feel that it cuts on their infrastructure cost also. And they are able to save a lot of money, a lot of cost cutting can happen as a result of it. So, strategic shift is being experienced by the organizations for ensuring the success of the organization. And then uh, certainly HRM is adapting to this trend by redefining the policies, implementing virtual collaborations with various organizations and uh, collaboration tools and focusing on measuring productivity rather than physical presence. So, everything is linked to the performance metrics. We are making use of more of performance metrics. The uh, KPIs, the KRAs are very well given to the individuals uh, well in advance to work on. And uh, the organization's major focus is not to see that whether the people are coming to the organization or not. The endeavor is not to ensure that the employees are being uh, regularly present in the organization or not. Rather, the focus is towards ensuring that the work is done, the KRAs are being met and the KPIs are being taken care of. And this is something very easy to monitor using some of the advanced tools of performance metrics of performance management. Then adaptation of HR policies for, for flexibility is yet another thing. So, majorly the challenge lies in maintaining employee engagement and, uh, and to ensure connection in a dispersed work environment. But still, organizations are trying their level best to ensure that the HR policies are aligned with the objectives, the personal and professional objectives of the organization in such a way that, you know, the flexibility is also ensured to the individual because they want to create that employee engagement, they want to create that employee experience for people. Next trend which is picking up in today's time is employee experience. So, the focus of organizations is on creating employee experience and it is taking center stage today if you see, wherein the focus is on positive work culture and the essence of well-being and growth of individual is also seen. So, the employee experience is taken uh, center stage as, as I just mentioned. So, beyond, beyond the uh, traditional focus of HR processes, which at one point of time used to be just interested in uh, creating some kind of work culture or work environment in the organization. But then today, the effort is towards recognizing the importance of creating a positive work culture as well as positive work experience for the individuals. And how does it happen? It happens by making sure that the employee's well-being is being taken care of. Regularly, on repeated basis or continuous basis, many of the organizations are taking some kind of employee surveys. They are keeping a track of the well-being of the individuals. They are making use of some kind of standardized scales. They are making use of some kind of quantitative phenomena by means of which they can understand the actual mental well-being level of an individual. Right. And then they are taking a note of those things and working on it. And as a result of it, they think on the lines of developing some kind of wellness programs for their employees. Because they understand that healthy mind is the way to healthy body. And definitely if you have healthy mind and healthy body, it will eventually lead to the success of organization. So, this involves addressing employee well-being, fostering a sense of purpose, providing various opportunities to people to learn and grow and develop themselves. 
so a lot of professional development programs a lot of career development opportunities career development workshops and uh, leadership programs management development programs are being provided to the individuals to really create a good positive experience for them so next trend which is picking up is about companies placing a lot of emphasis on diversity equity and inclusion hrm is in, is evolving today to ensure that the workplaces are not just the diverse workplaces but also inclusive in nature so the idea is not just to get the people from various places or uh, getting the diverse set of employees from various uh, spaces and places but also to create an inclusive workplace for them so that they get a good employee experience and they are working their level best towards the uh, objectives of the organization and then is about unbiased recruitment and inclusive initiatives which would mean training programs to mitigate any kind of unconscious biases that happen during recruitment even for recruitment analytics like things are picking up a lot of artificial intelligence uh, mechanisms are picking up for recruitment also to ensure that there is no biasness included in the recruitment process so a very fair and transparent kind of environment is being created in order to ensure that the people are happy they are uh, you know satisfied and in order to create a very positive culture within the organization for them to groom then next trend is about upskilling and reskilling so as we are all aware of the fact that a lot of changes are happening at a very very fast pace a lot of technological changes are happening at a very very rapid pace and uh, it is leading to skill gap within the organization so organizations are interested in filling this skill gap by addressing the needs related to knowledge abilities skills of the employees so hrm is responded by prioritizing upskilling and reskilling as one of the key elements they are trying to address the global talent shortages continuous learning programs partnerships with the various educational institutions and integration of uh, several you know online platforms are also making their way for example these days many organizations really promote and encourage their employees to take up some kind of certification programs because they want them to continually evolve they really want them to continuously grow they are sent for n number of uh, you know professional development programs they are sent for n number of uh, upskilling platforms you know uh, so there are n number of uh, things which are being done by the organizations these days to ensure that the individuals are upskilled and reskilled if needed it is in order to cope up with the changes in the dynamic environment that are happening so in order to keep up with the political economic social technological environment all these things are happening and definitely a lot of continuous learning initiatives in the form of asynchronous learning synchronous learning and some physical programs to attend people are being provided with some kind of learning platforms or the other to make sure that the hr strategies align with the professional as well as personal goals of the individuals a uh, next trend which is picking up these days is well being programs so as i just mentioned that employee well being is a critical focus for hrm it is taking the center stage today the effort of the organization is not just to keep the employees happy with the medical benefits which they were given at some point of time and uh, since this was a practice which was being continued for long so the organizations are no more just interested in giving the employees the right kind of opportunities to uh, you know right kind of benefits in terms of medical benefits in terms of medical uh, insurances etc but organizations are even ready to implement some kind of holistic wellbeing programs to specifically focus on the physical mental and emotional health of the individuals for example workshop on stress management or some kind of stress stress management uh, initiatives may be taken by the organizations mindfulness programs may be there 
and then there can be some kind of things related to flexible working uh, arrangement for the individual so that they can really uh, you know strike a balance between their professional commitments and their work lives professional commitment as their personal lives so all these efforts are being deliberately put by the organizations to strengthen the mental and physical health of the individuals and to keep them emotionally happy then is about agile performance so now i'm going to talk about you know agile performance management so we can see that today uh, the focus of the organization has shifted from traditional system of performance appraisal to performance management the idea is to ensure that the continuous feedback is given to the individual is taken on regular basis and the idea is also to make sure that the performance of the individual is managed rather than just being evaluated at some point of time the organization organizations used to focus primarily on reviewing the performance of individuals they were just interested in understanding who are the uh, good performers bad performers and maybe who are average performers and then they used to take some steps to rectify those things at a later stage and this kind of phenomena used to happen maybe once a year or twice a year but nowadays we have systems in place many of the organizations are using such kind of systems wherein they are continuously monitoring the performance of individuals they are keeping a track of the individuals and whenever there is a scope of improvement the employees are communicated about it they provide provided the continuous uh, feedback a very constructive feedback for enhancing their performance at work so we have some kind of you know real time performance tools also which are put in place and certainly these tools uh, help us in aligning the performance goals with the organizational uh, strategic objectives so real time performance tools is something which is again gaining momentum these days and uh, nearly in all spheres of hrm in all uh, the domains of hrm be it recruitment selection training development performance or any other domain you know real time tools are making their way the next is sustainability and csr so employees and consumers are increasingly valuing socially responsible organizations so hrm is incorporating sustainability and csr uh, initiatives into talent attraction and retention strategies so this involves aligning the organizational values with the societal and environmental responsibilities organizations are certainly putting in a lot of effort to make sure that uh, people profit planet all these things are being very well taken care of this um, is based on the premise set by uh, the triple bottom line concept of sustainability so a lot of effort these days being is being put on uh, incorporating sustainability and csr initiatives into talent attraction talent retention and also integrating the csr practices into hr practices for example employee volunteering is also an integral part to it then is about aligning the values with societal responsibilities so kras of the individuals the kpis of the individuals are designed in such a way that uh, both the objectives are met the organizational goals are met and also the societal responsibilities are also met so this was about the emerging trends which collectively represent a shift in the role and functions of hrm and we can very well witness that the organizations are focusing and they are emphasizing more on adaptability employee centric kind of behavior of the uh, you know employee centric kind of practices and integration of technology in several mechanism for strategic decision making so today hr has taken a very different shape it is no more a traditional hr uh, it has actually uh, taken a different shape altogether in terms of integrating technology in terms of many other things that we just discussed so it was about preparing you know it was about the various uh, emerging trends in human resource management now we move to 
the the second segment of a presentation which relates to preparing for hrm in the digital age so certainly there are a lot of changes which are being witnessed and uh, today we can see a lot of changes are being witnessed by the organizations and it becomes very very important for the organizations also to make sure in the digital age uh, that they are very well prepared so preparation of uh, human resource management in the digital age involves navigating the various challenges and opportunities pre presented by technology so technology is definitely providing a whole host of challenges as well as various opportunities are also pre presented by it there are a lot of changes in the workforce dynamics and evolving organizational needs so now we're going to discuss several aspects of preparation for human resource management in the digital age and we'll start by embracing digital transformation so as we are very well aware of the fact that a lot of changes have already come up so if we really want to keep up with the changes it's important to prepare ourselves for those changes for taking up those changes so embracing digital transformation is the key to it it's important for us to understand the key technology trends it's important for us to integrate ai ml and analytics into our hr processes it's important for us to stay informed about the various technologies which are coming up for example it has become nearly very very important for the organizations to be competent in artificial intelligence like mechanisms ma machine learning and automation etc understanding how these technologies can really help hr processes right from recruitment of the individuals to training them to perform making them perform well to their employee engagement towards creating uh, a positive work culture in the organizations all these things are very very important then investing in hr technology implementing modern technology solutions is again important so implementing modern hr technology solutions is important to make sure that you know the streamlined processes processes are there in order to enhance the data analytics and improve the overall efficiency so i think at this point of time it's very important for us to take care of these things because by incorporating such kind of things such kind of practices in our already existing systems we can definitely take our systems to the next level uh, for example i'll just take an example here of some of the hr matrix there are n number of hr matrix which can be used to take some kind of decisions related to data so let's talk about a matrix related to intention to quit so if we get to learn right at the outset right in the beginning itself that whether an individual has an intention to quit the organization or not are there any chances or is there any likelihood of individuals to quit the organization in the beginning or not i think it would help us in having a very uh, you know smooth process it will help us in understanding the intention of an individual to quit the organization and therefore we may uh, take a very informed decision regarding recruitment of that individual in the organization so such kind of uh, things can really help us make our way similarly things like performance metrics understanding the uh, various issues and uh, understanding the various quantitative mechanisms related to the impact of uh, the satisfaction level of an an employee to the employee engagement level will also help us in various ways so there are n number of things which can be used we have some inbuilt systems we we may use uh, we may purchase we may invest in some modern hr technology solution and uh, i think a lot of work can be expedited and can be made more smooth than ever before so it may include applicant tracking systems then performance management tools employee engagement programs etc so there can be n number of uh, things there can be n number of ways by means of which we can strengthen the hr processes as i mentioned applicant tracking system may be there there can be automatic systems to you know uh, screen the applications 
and uh, maybe screen the video interviews that we take, then uh, enhancing the data analytics can also help, then providing some employee engagement platforms to the people wherein the technology itself is taking care of the employee engagement level. Then is about developing the digital skills. So, when we talk about developing the digital skills, it is first of all important for us to identify the digital skill gap within the HR team, wherein we need to understand and evaluate the current competence level of the individuals. And then we need to figure out if we need some kind of upskilling or do we need some kind of reskilling. So, addressing the skill gap, digital skill gap is of utmost importance and therefore, uh, if they are taken well, then certainly the organization can move in a more sustained way. Then promoting a culture of continuous learning within the organization, I have seen a lot of organizations, you know, taking learning and development as one of the important parameters for assessing the performance of the individuals. So, providing them with, uh, you know, updated courses, providing them with n number of opportunities, the training programs, resources to keep HR professionals updated on la uh, latest technologies and trends in the digital landscape. So, this, these kinds of things are definitely going to help us a lot in preparing for the digital age. Then it is about enhancing the recruitment strategies. Uh, I think many of you must be aware of the fact that AI has made its way in the recruitment also. So, implementing artificial intelligence and recruitment can really help us in many ways. So, leveraging the AI driven tools for talent acquisition can really help. We can use algorithms to analyze the resumes and uh, a lot of manual interventions can be you know reduced and uh, it, it can then happen in a very expeditious manner and uh, it can happen in a very smooth manner also. Uh, the results are certainly going to be more concrete and the results are going to be more, more uh, transparent in a way when it is done through all these AI driven mechanisms. But then the only thing is the machine needs to be trained properly. Then it is about focus on employer branding through digital channels. Using digital channels to enhance the employer branding is also helping the organizations because it is a real difficult challenge before the organizations to attract the right sets of people, to attract them to apply for the job positions of the organization. It is important to show case some kind of values and culture and opportunities to the people through some kind of social media platforms, through some career websites, online platforms and other digital plat platforms. So, organizations today you can, you can very well understand the power of uh, employer branding. So, organizations have to put in a lot of efforts to make sure that they are branded well. Any negative review of the organization can have serious repercussions on the overall recruitment process and may impact the you know employee uh, experiences. So, this is yet another thing which is definitely an important phenomena to take care of. Next is about adopting agile performance management. So, by means of this kind of systems wherein we have real time feedback systems. A moment back I talked about constructive feedback to the people from time to time, right. But then if we have a real time performance monitoring phenomena for the individuals, and uh, if the people are aware of their discrepancies, their grey areas and the, the moment they are moved away from the traditional annual performance reviews and uh, they are shown their continuous progress or maybe they are shown their uh, continuous feedback and reviews, they would definitely be helped and they can correct themselves as and when the problem occurs. So, implementing various tools that facilitate real time feedback and we have some such kind of mechanisms into place. We have n number of real time tools which are into place which can help us in tracking the performance of an individual on real time basis. 
and maybe the prompts also come as and when some kind of problem happens. And in case some kind of, uh, you know, some kind of, um, you know, uh, some good achievement is being done by the individual or maybe uh, he achieves something more than expected or he achieves what is he expected of, then at that time the employer may be prompted to give some kind of accolades for that individual. So, we have some such kind of self driven uh, mechanisms for the organizations which can certainly help them in monitoring their performances, keep a track of the performance goals using the digital tools and definitely aligning individual objectives with the organizational objectives can also be helped in many ways. There is about uh, implementing remote work policies. So, today it has become a very very common phenomena for the organizations to focus on remote working solutions or to focus on remote work policies, but then it is important to develop clear remote work policies for them. For example, developing and communicating, communicating such kind of policies will definitely help the organizations. So, leveraging digital collaborations tools to facilitate seamless communication in this case we have n number of such platforms available which can facilitate seamless communication in remote setting also. So, these kinds of things can really help the organization in multiple ways. Then implementing the virtual well being programs and mental health support programs for the employees can also work when you are. Uh, allowing your employees to work in remote settings because many of the organizations have uh, really switched from the traditional setups to remote working solutions for their organizations. So, we need to understand uh, the needs of people and uh, at times people are very happy and they are very motivated also working in uh, remote working systems and many of the organizations have gone for this hybrid mode which talks about uh, letting the individual enjoy the autonomy of sitting at their homes or working or allowing them to come to the organization and uh, be there present accordingly. Then as I mentioned uh, data driven decision making is again an important phenomena. So, embracing the HR analytics for informed decision making. For example, analyzing the workforce data to identify the trends, to predict the talent needs, to make strategic decisions related to retention, recruitment, performance. These are some of the areas which can really help. So, we have to prepare ourselves with such kind of things, we have to embrace the data analytics to inform, to make more informed HR decisions and definitely we have to ensure robust data security measures. Uh, if we implement robust data security measures to protect the sensitive information regarding the employees and stay compliant with the data protection regulations and we you know also respect the privacy and concerns of the individual in context of uh, security, then uh, certainly it will help in smoothing the process to a large extent. Uh, next is about fostering a digital culture. So, when we talk about fostering a digital culture, it has something to do with providing the communication platform for people and also you know utilizing the digital communication platforms. So, it is about fostering collaboration. and knowledge sharing both within and outside the organization. So, these kinds of platforms can be used within the HR teams and across the organizations also. Then we have implementing the digital onboarding wherein we can utilize digital tools to onboarding process, provide a seamless digital onboarding experience which can be a wonderful thing. For example, the uh, individual when he joins the organization especially when he, he is asked to work in uh, remote uh, settings and he is given the flexibility to work from his own uh, remote work place and in that case he may be provided uh, with some kind of overview of the organization through, through uh, virtual reality or maybe through some kind of uh, you know uh, virtual tour of the organization and uh, such kind of digital onboarding experiences for new hires and especially introduction of uh, some e-learning modules and interactive processes to get them acclimatized with the organization can really help them in multiple ways. Uh, apart from this, uh, adapting to changing workforce dynamics. This is again an important thing to address. As we know that today we have to deal with multi-generational workforce, which means that we have to tailor the HR practices for multiple 
uh, kinds of people or multi generational workforce. So, HR practices are required to be customized according to the needs of people. In the previous lectures also I was talking about different generations of people. For example, generation X people would be different from generation Y and generation Y would be very different from generation Z. So, we have to take care of the multi generational workforce needs and today if three different generations are working in a workplace, then certainly we have to be very very careful about customizing our HR practices to the needs of people and tailoring such kind of HR practices to accommodate different work styles and expectations will really help. Then developing strategies for managing remote uh, teams in terms of collaboration in order to enhance the experience of seamless communication and in order to uh, you know foster a culture of team cohesion in a work environment. All these things are certainly going to help when it comes to adapting to changing workforce dynamics. Then uh, besides everything else, it is important for us to take care of data protection regulations. So, the HR is supposed to be very very clear on the data protection regulations and it is important to take care of ethical AI practices, which means we should always have an endeavor or we should always endeavor to avoid biases in algorithms and ensure some kind of fairness, I mean not some kind of a complete fairness in decision making and maintaining transparency in the use of AI technologies. So, these kinds of things can really help. Another thing in this context could be something related to our providing cyber security training for HR professionals. So, individuals must be trained on these lines and they need to be uh, provided some kind of security, cyber security related training, so that they are efficiently working towards the organizational goals. So, these things are certainly going to help the organizations in uh, shaping the future of the organization in a better fashion and definitely working closely with IT for securing HR systems will also help. So, this is how you know the HRM can uh, really the human resource management can really be benefited in the digital age and uh, we need to prepare for HRM in the digital age and uh, since these are some of the important concerns for the organizations. So, it is very important to stay updated on these things, it is very important to take care of these things and moreover it is very important to keep up with the changes that are coming up in the dynamic landscape of businesses. Now, we have already talked about certain important aspects related to preparation of preparing for HRM in the digital age and emerging trends in HRM. Now, that we have been able to understand what does it entail, what does it include and how does it happen, I think it is important for us to understand the future of work and its implication on HR. So, when we talk about future of work and, uh, and its implication on HR, certainly the future of work beholds a lot of things and it is important for us to see that what implications does it have on HR. So, now we will be talking about some important aspects related to the future of work and its implication on HR. Uh, so, basically when we talk about this thing, the first thing which comes here, it has uh, a lot to do with what we have discussed so far, but uh, we will now be seeing it, seeing it from a different point of view. So, for example, when we talk about digital transformation, you know digital transformation and remote work, the implication can be in terms of integration of technology in the work processes and automation and AI impacting job roles. So, digital transformation uh, has accelerated the adop adoption of uh, remote work in the organizations. So, HR needs to adapt by implementing the uh, various processes for example, virtual recruitment process, leveraging the strength of the collaboration tools. So, this will be the implications of uh, digital transformation on HR. 
moreover we have to ensure that the policies and procedures are conducive to remote kind of work settings and also hybrid kind of environment uh, then the next aspect is focus on employee experience what implications will it have the future of work emphasizes the importance of a positive workplace culture and ensuring positive work experience for the people so if the organization is stressing primarily on cultivating a culture wherein a positive experience is given to the employees then certainly it's going to be benefited so hr must prioritize creating an environment that fosters such kind of culture and that fosters the culture of employee well being employee engagement employee development also so the hr has to think on these lines in terms of providing well being to the employees to ensure the well being of employees like mentoring can be one of the ways by means of which such kind of thing can be done then another thing in this context could be even providing them with some kind of wellness programs then uh, some kind of career counseling can be given to the individuals some kind of uh, positive psychology or positive psychological counseling may be you know given by the organization to its employees to ensure the well being of individuals so we have to take care of their emotional well being their physical well being and also their mental well being and then to put the people at work a lot of engagement strategies may be used and definitely providing them with adequate kind of opportunities to develop themselves to groom themselves to holistically you know uh, develop themselves would really help in this regard then it's about skill development this is again a very important area to take care of with the rise in automation and evolving job roles i think hr plays a very vital role in facilitating continuous learning and upskilling initiatives so the idea is to first of all identify the skill gap we need to first of all identify the skill gap then we need to implement some kind of training program the work doesn't end here it's not just about identifying the skill gap it's about training the individuals properly and fostering a culture of lifelong learning so we have to create a culture we have to foster a culture of lifelong learning to ensure the employees to ensure that the employees remain agile in the organization and also they are adaptable to various new systems at work then uh, you know we've already talked about this major thing remote work and flexibility a lot of changes are being experienced by the organizations so it becomes really very challenges challenging for the organizers to organizations to maintain engagement and connection amongst the employees then is about emphasis on diversity equity and inclusion first of all the hr needs to have some robust mechanism of attracting the people uh, attracting the diverse set of people in the organization then it's about implementing unbiased hiring and giving them equal kind of opportunities equal opportunities so by giving them equal opportunities and to promote a culture of unbiased learning what is primarily important is to create an inclusive environment for them which means that they feel that they are a part of the organization so this kind of inclusive environment is majorly supposed to be stressed upon and uh, such things are really going to help the organizations in multiple ways next is about agile performance management so traditional performance management as i just told used to focus on a different kinds of performance management system but today we have 
to take care of continuous tracking of the performance of individuals and providing them with real time feedback systems. So, real time monitoring tools, collaborative tools can really help in this regard. So, HR must adapt by implementing technologies that facilitates real time performance assessments, setting the clear objectives for the people, setting the clear kind of uh, key performance indicators for people, the key result areas for people, uh, making sure that they are given these smart goals in the beginning itself and uh, fostering an ongoing communication between the employer and employee. So, such kind of culture can really help the organizations in multiple ways and can really help them grow to the next level. Then is about uh, global talent market. So, we are aware of the fact that there has been an increase that has been witnessed in terms of global sourcing of talent and also navigating the international labor laws and team dynamics is yet another concern. So, HR has to be prepared with the international labor laws also and the team dynamics so as to promote the culture of uh, inclusiveness in the organization and so as to ensure that the people are working in line with each other and they are working continuously towards the growth of the organization. So, this is about global talent market and then we have some kind of well-being programs. So, to address the mental, emotional and physical uh, health of the individuals and it is important to provide a comprehensive well-being initiatives to the individuals, to put in place the right kind of uh, workshops, programs, systems, counselings, etcetera in place, so that they are working towards the well-being of the individuals. So, wellness programs can really help in this regard and there can be n number of ways to address the mental, emotional and physical health. Like for example, many organizations keep a tap on the emotional health of the individuals by reading their emotions and also taking some kind of employee surveys from time to time. They also keep a track of uh, you know the uh, mental health of the individuals, the mental well-being of the individuals and they promote the culture of uh, mentoring and counseling within the organization. Then next is human machine collaboration. So, as, as we are all aware of the fact that humans and machines are two different entities, humans and machines if they start competing who will win? Likelihood is that you know machines will win because uh, machines have been programmed that way and uh, they already have the brains of many individuals. So, artificial intelligence is a, is a classic example in this case, right. But then it is important for us to understand that if machines are going to outcompete humans on certain aspects, there are certain aspects in which the humans are going to outcompete machines. So, instead of getting into unnecessary unhealthy competition between the humans and machines, it is important to collaborate. It is important that we create a culture of collaborations between humans and machines. So, as automation and AI become more integrated in the workplace, HR needs to focus on managing the collaborations that happen between humans and machines. This includes addressing several concerns such as reskilling the employees for new roles, fostering a very dynamic kind of culture, a culture full of innovations within the work practices. And in the same way, you can manage the impact of automation on jobs as well. Then, uh, after this, sustainability and CSR. So, how do we integrate these sustainable practices into the HR strategies? It is again a deep concern for the organization. HR has to assume the role of incorporating and integrating the sustainable practices to the HR practices of the organization. So, as to make sure that people are working in tandem, the employees of the organizations are working in tandem with the sustainable goals of the organizations as well, the sustainability goals of the organization as well, the corporate social responsibility initiatives of the organization as well. So, it involves aligning the organization's value with the societal responsibilities. So, in the same manner, you know, organizational values are important for us. It is important for us to take care of the societal responsibilities also and therefore, it becomes a major challenge for the organizations to align the organization's values with the societal responsibilities. So, 
this was uh, all about uh, the future of work and implications. So, I think uh, we should conclude it by giving you a glimpse of whatever we have covered so far. So, in today's presentation, uh, we navigated the various challenges and emerging trends in human resource management and how they are changing the dynamics of uh, work environment and workplaces. We talked about the future of work and its implications for HR and we also talked about how HRM can be prepared, the HR can be prepared in the digital age for taking those challenges. And I think uh, now you have a fair understanding of all these things and I hope you will be benefiting out of these challenges and trends in HRM. Thank you. Thank you.